Well, hello folks. How are you doing? Hopefully everything's working fine today. Uh, first of all, apologies for last night. I did plan to go live last night and I had a wee bit of a blip with YouTube uh, as YouTube were... Uh, it, the whole place had crashed globally. Um, just not sure where we are here. Let's have a look. I think my chat's just disappeared. We still chat. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, that looks like it's back. Uh, do, do, do. Can you hear me okay, guys? Just Somebody just pop me a quick comment if the, if you can hear me okay. Brilliant. Okay, super. All right, guys, just a couple of things to talk about today. Uh, I want to have a wee... I did plan to do a live two or three weeks ago, and uh, I had an issue again with YouTube, so it didn't happen, so it just went out as a premiere. Um, what well, I want to do a wee bit again, guys, is is whiskey, as we, we're all here for that. It's all about uh, prices and how you buy it and where you buy it from. Um, and also I want to touch on a wee bit of collecting, because obviously I've done that in the past as well. Still do a little bit of dabbling. I just want to find out if you guys are going to be honest with me and tell me if you collect as well or you just drink it. So that, that will probably come a wee bit later. Uh, the other one I want to do, I did a new subscriber uh, giveaway two or three weeks ago. I'm ready to announce the winner today and I'll do that live tonight. I'll let it get picked by my mobile. So I've got a little list of people who have done that. And last of all, I've done my past my 400 subscriber count so i did offer another sample pack then so i'll do something a little bit later on with that and hopefully we can um get that one given out to somebody as well some nice drums in there so let's have a wee look at who we've got in tonight uh we've got mr slinger mark slinger's in well done mate uh you're one of your regulars around quite a bit uh cask mate well done, Matthias. How are you doing? I don't know if you're still here, but you were in. Oh, yeah, I can see you now, mate. And Tisvet so nice to see you, mate. You are the recipient of one of my giveaway drums. I'm sure you'll let everybody know how nice they were. Let's have a look and see. Uh, Andy C. Yeah, he's up in Speyside drinking some. What were you drinking, Andy? You were drinking... Oh, I can't remember what you were drinking, but... Um, I'm sure you're enjoying it anyway. Okay, guys. Uh, hopefully, some other guys will pop in. If they don't, I'm sure we'll have we'll have a good night. Uh, amazing, still dramming. Oh, old Pulteney seventeen. Yeah, tis vet. So I thought you were going to say that because well, I've got I've got my old Pulteney seventeen waiting for later on. Uh, I'm sitting drinking a Glen Cadam fifteen at the minute. That's a beautiful, beautiful dram. Uh, it's been sitting for a while, so just before I crack on, I'll have a little sip. Cheers, guys. Wonderful, wonderful. What's going on then? Got my tomato PC ready for it. <laughs> Wow. Uh, what was it we called that, Mark? What was it? I'm sure you'll tell everybody what it was called. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, old Pulteney later, so that's all. Hope I've not butchered your name again, mate. I think I do that quite regularly with you now, so. Okay, guys, whiskey prices. How much are you prepared to pay for a bottle of whiskey? That's a good question, isn't it? Who's going to answer me? Oh, Whiskey Throttle. How are you doing, Daniel? Thanks for popping in, mate. What time have you got over there? Don't know if it's late or if it's early, but it must be one of the two. Oh, yeah. Bottle of Good God. That's the PX. That's going to be known for that from now on, I think. Um, so, prices. I'm pretty much prepared to pay anything. Oh, 1.04pm. Oh, that's nice and early. Yeah, that's nice and early. Are you drinking whiskey, Daniel? Are you just sipping on some coffee or something? Uh, 
Because the thing with prices for me, guys, is it's it's up and down. It's all over the place. Some people are prepared to pay 50 quid. Some people are prepared. I've paid 1,200 for a 15-year-old. Oh, that's... Uh, that doesn't seem a lot, mate. What what was that? Fifty year old. I've seen fifty year olds going for like thousands and thousands of pounds, but uh, reduced from seven. Oh yeah, we got a bargain there, then, eh? Is it one we know? See, Daniel, you've got you for catching your videos. You've got a nice collection there as well, mate, Andy. I think you must be a bit of a collector, but we'll come back to that a bit later. Ah, oh, secret. <laughs> Yeah, no, okay. I'm sure if you've had a couple of drinks, you'll tell us someday, but uh, my limit is, a Mark Slinger's limit is £100. So how do you decide on £100, Mark? What, what's the criteria? What's what's going to make you go over that £100, Mark? I might ask you a little question. If they put Tomatin PX up to 110 would you buy it? Okay, Daniel's at work, so... I'm sure you'll have a nice dram later, Daniel. But I appreciate you popping in, mate. That's great. Thanks. Oh, there's Bill, the Bourbon Professor's in. How you doing, Bill? You okay? I don't have... I've looked cast mates. Doesn't have an unopened bottle in my collection. I'm too curious. That's great. Can't hear Matthias. If that's, that's what you do with the whiskey, then that's fine. Uh, but do you... Do you have a limit what you would pay? There are some lovely whiskeys at 100, and I'm happy with this selection. 85 to 95. Yeah, but you've not answered my question. If it goes up to 110, are you going to buy it? You've obviously bought it because it's went from 85 to 95, but um, that's that's the golden question. Is, is There's some guys who want to spend 50 quid, and that's the max, which I think they've kind of doing themselves out a little bit of some fantastic whiskies, But obviously there's different reasons for that. As uh, I say, I've, I think the most expensive one I've paid for, I think probably is about, I think I've paid about like 400 quid. I think I paid for a Glen Fiddock a few years back. But I eventually flipped that and sold that for 17.95. So, so that wasn't too bad. Um, and then that's again, it brings us on to collecting whiskies. Um, obviously, I, I think if the guys that have followed me before will know my kind of history is that I've I started off collecting, uh, and then and they find my way into to drinking at a later stage. So I was kind of seven years in before I drunk any. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Ross N's popped in. How are you doing, Ross? Nice to see you, mate. Thanks for coming in. Uh, thanks for your comments on the videos, mate. That's super. Hope you've subscribed. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Do you think with these subscription guys is I don't know I don't know everybody that's subscribed because I think a lot of you have privacy uh, settings on. So some I know who have subscribed and some I don't know who have subscribed. Um, but I'm sure where are we? Yeah, a lot of these names are all kind of familiar names, so I'm pretty sure we all of these. Uh, Ronan O'Leary, how you doing, Lord Ronan? Ronan O'Leary's popped in. Uh, have the favourite cast strength whiskey for under 100. Okay. Would you have a favourite cask? Uh, let's have a wee look, see if I've got one here. Uh, do, 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 do. I think... One of the ones I've got here, I've got a tomato in here. Mark that command, tomatin's cash strength, isn't it? PX. Uh, let's have a look. I'm passing a lot back to the Laphroaig cash strength. I'm not a big fan of the peats, but I like the that Laphroaig one. Laphroaig 10 cash strength, that's, that's one that I would probably recommend. Uh, Oh, Gold Mund, how are you doing, mate? Nice, thanks for popping in. Thanks for your recent subscription. There might be something interesting for you coming up. Oh, yes. It's cast, yeah, straight for the cast. Yeah, you're right, Matt. Well done. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, how are you doing, Russell? I'm getting tired of retailers demanding over $100 for heavily sherry trams. 12 years old. 
a bit of a rip off at the moment. Yeah, no, the thing with whiskey is it's, I think because it's getting more popular and more popular and more people are drinking it, then it's it's inevitable that the prices are going to go up. But where, where I kind of draw the line is with things like um, Old Pulteney, who have just changed it slightly. They've changed from the age statements from a 17 to a 15 and the price goes up. So it's it's things like that that kind of kind of worry me more than anything. Um but yeah, no, it's there's a lot of that going around. There are rebranding. Bal Blair's done the same. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how the. It'd be interesting to see how, old Pulteney goes on. Whether it's it has an impact or whether it doesn't. And the same with Bal Blair. Obviously, the changes. So it'd be interesting to see what those brands do. But I don't think they'll be the last to do it. I think other brands will head along and do it as well. The same thing. All adding the marketing costs and all sorts. Uh, okay, who's looking the way we're looking for now? Uh, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do, guys. I'm just going to crack on and do this. A few weeks back, I done a new subscriber giveaway, which was going to be the... Oh, let's have a look. I think I've got it here. It was... So I had the... Glen Goyne 25, Glen Goyne Legacy, Glen Goyne Teapot Dram, and the Glen Goyne 21. And I was going to pop a mystery dram in to make it. I've got five in the box. So I was going to pop five in the box. So I made a list. Uh, I've got a list of 23 names here. I did have more subscribers, but as I said earlier, the... There was a, if you've got privacy statements on, then I can't see they are, who they are. But I've got a few names here. If your name's on the list, then <laughs> if it's not, then I'm, I'm sorry because it, it, it doesn't show up. So I've got a little list here, which I'll hold up in a minute. I don't know if you can make out that, but I'm going to ask to pick a random. I've got 23 names. So let's have a look. Choose me a number between 1 and 23. 9. So we've got number 9. So who's that going to be? Oh, my. We have, I have a winner. Number 9 is Malcolm Douglas. Uh, I'm not sure if you can make that out. Uh... But yeah, Malcolm Douglas, I don't think he's in tonight. I haven't seen him. Um, but I'll drop that off to Malcolm. Well done, Malcolm. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I will do another one later on, guys, because I also said I would do one for the hitting 400 subscribers. So I see I will do that later. I'll pop something up later on. Uh, let's have a look. Whoa, how are you doing, Jay? Nice to see you, mate. Thanks for popping in. What time have you got over there? Are you daytime or night time? If you keep an eye later on, Jay, you might be in with a shout for one later on, mate. See, I've got another wee draw coming up. Uh, yeah, no, the... Okay, let's do a wee bit on collecting, guys. Who collects and who doesn't? There must be some of you out there. Um... Are you all secret collectors? Or are you just hoarders? Oh, Ronan's a collector. Okay, Ronan, how many bottles have you got in your collection? And what's your best one? Noontime in California. Oh, that sounds nice. Bet the sun's out. He's sitting on the beach having a dram. I buy, open, drink and share. Well done, Bill. That's nice. Mark Slinger's no collections. I think, Mark, as you get, because you're, you're quite early into your journey, aren't you? So I think as time goes on, I think you might find some bottles that, oh, well, there's another one at work. Wow. Sun is out, but I'm sat in my office at work. Well, I'm, I'm glad you popped in, Jay. Thanks for that, mate. And you're there always commenting as always, mate. Thanks for your support of the channel. Okay. Mr. Slinger, I, don't, I think you're going to collect at some point. 
they probably tell me you won't, but Russell, I'm much too curious to leave a bottle unopened. The world's worst possible collector. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not saying we're all collectors, but I'm, I'm probably sure there's a few of you. Are. I think these are all telling lies and keeping secrets. Uh, we didn't know where to start. It's dead easy, mate. You just go online and you just Google some whiskeys, collectibles and stuff like that. You, you'll, you, if you follow, if you go into the auctions, mate, you'll see what's happening. But the, the thing with the auctions is that's where I tend to get a lot of mine from. You can pick up some bargains and sometimes you can get carried away. Um, you know, there's lots of bottles there. But I think the, the, what I've, one of the top tips that I can give if you do do auction, if you've got your eye on a bottle and there's only one in that, then I'd leave it alone um, because you'll end up paying over the odds for it. Uh, no worries, Matthias. We'll catch up with you later, mate. Thanks for popping in. Um, yeah, if there's only one bottle in that option and you start chasing it, then you could end up paying a wee bit over the odds for it. But you'll probably find at the next auction there may be five or six of them. And when that's the case... Oh, hi, Swami. How you doing, mate? Thanks for popping in. How you doing, pal? How's the bike going? I think you've been out kind of blasting those motorways, haven't you? Turn the real profit as a collector, seller. Doesn't it require a good chunk of investment, like acquiring cases? Uh, I don't think so, Jay. Um, I never ever bought cases and stuff like that. I would just look out for limited editions, um, just certain bottles where that was low counts. If you if you followed some of the chatter, you could see what was what was flying off the shelves. Uh, it's going perfect from Swami. I'm glad to hear that, mate. Tavetsor's just a drinker. Okay, I think he's all telling lies, man. I think. Come on, somebody must be collecting whiskey out of all of you guys, man. I'm not the only one. And Daniel, I know Daniel's got a few. Uh, just to give you another example, guys. McCallan. This McAllen came out four years ago and I paid £79 for this, right? And as, as Jay said, you should be buying cases and things. This is one regret that I have with this bottle because when I, when I paid my £79 for it, I didn't realise what was going to happen with this bottle. Is it now there's all four? I've got all four of them. There's been one out each year. Um, but the most sought after one is the the number one. And to be fair, now if I was to look at this, at all, I think there's an auction just finished last night, and that bottle's gone for about eight hundred to nine hundred pounds. That's a case I wish I had bought. Gold Mons just started collecting. Bought two McAllen eighteens. Learned about Glen Goyne. Bought the twenty one. Learned about Glen Dronach, Bought the fifteen and twenty one. Yeah, is that the old Glendronach you've got? Uh, got is it Goldmund? Forgive me if I've butchered your name, mate. But yeah, uh, but no, I think anything McAllen. I think you'll uh, you won't lose out any money on them. But if if you do, then you could just drink them. So it's it balances out. Or oh, the new fifteen. Okay, not sure if that'll be collectible Goldmund. I'd, I'd probably just drink that one, mate. Uh, if you've got the older one. There are collector bottles I have not bought. As an example, I have not bought any of the McAllen's. Yeah, no, it's well, it's there's that many bottles out there. Um, I think there's McAllen. Uh, if you look at McAllen as a, as one of those brands in general, I think they seem to be bringing out now. Everything seems to be a series. Everything seems to be driven to that collector's market. Um, which is a shame because a lot of people are not drinking. It's like this this bottle here, this number one edition. You see, it's a seventy-nine pound bottle of whiskey. So, but it's probably worth if you give it another year, it's probably going to be worth over a thousand pounds. So there's there's no point in drinking that because you would you would just be that disappointed. I'd probably rather sell that bottle and make some money and buy some more whiskey. Uh to drink this time, it's not so much on the collecting. 
Uh, because <laughs> Daniel thinks they're crap. <laughs> okay, I don't know if there's any McAllen fans watching, so if you want to put Daniel straight, then just give him a uh, give him a shout. Marketing pisses me off. Yeah, no, there's a lot of it going around now, Daniel. I think all the brands now, it's I think through technology and and all that nonsense, it's just marketing. Old Pulteney is a prime example in Bal Blair. I think these are just purely down to marketing um, purposes. The, well, hopefully the whiskey is just as good as it ever was. I'm tired to start. A Glen Allocky, 10 batches. Yeah, well, I've got the first batch. I've bought a couple of bottles of that, so I've, I've got one open and I've got one keep, kept. But that's a typical example. But I don't know, Glen Allocky, I don't know if it's that kind of... If it's a brand that's that's got that kind of um, profile and then people are going to sort after it. Um, but it's like anything. The other ones, the Ab Ab Abelour Abuna. If you collected the whole range of them, then I think there's about 60 odd of them at the minute. So it's if somebody's thought and collected every one of them, then that would be a nice little collection to have. Uh, well, we got Russell. I've opened the McAllen editions. They're all open and about half empty. Did you have the number one, Russell? Gold Mun's asking if the Glen Dronop 18 will be worth collecting. I think that's an interesting one, Gold Mund. I think if you look on the timestamp on the back of it, I think some of those 18s have actually got kind of 21, 22-year-old whiskies in them. Um, I think the one I've got uh, here is... This is a 2015 bottle. Um, so I think that's probably got about 20, 20, 21 year old stuff in it but I think, and it's got Billy Walker's signature on the back of that one as well so, so I don't know if the new 18s or the 18s that are still coming out whether they'll have Rachel Barry's signature on it so I think even with a Billy Walker signature I think it will help it uh, I always, if, if I could give any, any advice Goldman, is to look for bottles with numbers on them uh, whether it's a limited edition or it's one of whatever, uh, that's that's probably where I started originally. Is looking for bottles with numbers on. Um, the few of these old cow, uh, where are we? Let's have a look. See things like this, the old malt casks, they're not going to make you masses of money, but eventually, see, this is one of 315 bottles, uh, and that's from a chart. Charged from a refill hogshead. So they've all got numbers and they've got interest and they've got all your dates and all that on them. This is a single cask as well. But that's a long moan 13. I think I picked that up for about £45. So if it doesn't make any money, then I, I've got no problem drinking that. But I think, again, if you're going to start keeping them, then it, it's, it's the time. It's if, you, if you just store them up. I originally did it because... I thought my cabinets looked great. The house was getting cabinets and cabinets and cabinets and they were great to display. Uh, great talking points. I like the Glen Doyne 30. Wow, that's a nice bottle. Uh, I must hold my hands up. I've not actually had any of the Glen Goyne 30. I've got the Glen Goyne 25 and that's beautiful stuff. So if the Glen Goyne 30 is anything like the 25, then it's, it's spectacular. Uh, Rachel Barry's signature will make it lose value. <laughs> nice one, Swami. I can always count on you to give us the great advice, mate. Yeah, no, I, I, I think one of the one of the things that I've noticed when since Rachel Barry's taken over, I think the Glen Dronach uh, doesn't seem as much a buzz around. Uh, whereas when before it was everybody was into Glen Dronach, Glen Dronach, everybody was chattering about Glen Dronach, but. I think since Billy Walker's moved on, I don't know if it's... It'd be interesting to see. I think the Glendronach 15, because even that one, they've changed it. Whereas the old one was just all Oloroso, and now they've they've mixed it with PX and Oloroso. So it's, I have tried it, and it's it's a decent decent dram, but it's not like the old 15. Uh, for me, the old 15 all day long. I don't have it, but it has numbers. Yeah, big number 30, yeah. You pay a few quid for it as well. Uh, the only bottle I was putting away was given away at the gathering in Glasgow. Okay, well done, mate. That was nice. So you shared it 
Fantastic. It's all about the ethos. The pleasure is in the sharing. As long as you get great satisfaction from that, that's the main thing. It's then everything Rachel makes is lacking. Okay. I've not tried much swami, to be honest, since, since you took over. I've kind of switched to Glen Allocky, um because I was a fan of Billy Walker. So I've been buying a lot of the Glen Allocky's and they're they're great. Fantastic. Uh, from Bowmore to Glen Dronach. Yeah, well, you couldn't have said it any better, mate. Bowmore for me is was it went downhill. Uh, I don't know if that was Rachel Barry's fault, but According to Swami, I think it might have been. Uh, Rachel is using stocks which are actually 15 years older than significantly older stuff. Let me pass that again, Russell. Rachel is using stocks which are actually 15 years old rather than significant. Yeah, I think she's, I think Billy Walker's got out in time. I think Rachel's taken over and she's got a work cut out, uh, but I'm sure she'll do all right eventually. Uh, Matt Slinger likes what Billy is doing at Glen Allocky. I've bought three distillery exclusives. Yeah, no, I think we, when he moved to Glen Allocky, he was quite shrewd because he bought a distillery full of stock of whiskey. Um, they weren't bottling much, they weren't doing it, was a lot of it was going into blend. So he's got lots. And just to give you an idea for somebody to take over a distillery and be able to produce a core range. We a 10-year cast strength, a 12-year, uh, I think it's the 18 and a 25, which is phenomenal. Um, it just says a lot, and I think his timing, his, his shrewdness, and okay, Tony Evans, he's popped in. Hi, Tony, thanks for popping in, mate. Nice to see you. How are you doing? What are you drinking? Tvetso Lazarov, did someone try any cask releases by Glen Allocky? Yeah, I've got the, I've tried the 10 year old cast strength Tvetso and it's wonderful. Uh, super stuff. According to the press. Yeah, see, I just think the, and it's a thing, it's no coincidence that a guy moves and, and all the, all the headlines are all moving with him. So uh, whether it's it's luck or whether it's just being a super super master distiller, it's, it's, it's the timing's perfect. Um, and I, and I say to Glenn Dronach, can see all the kind of chatters kind of disappearing. And I hope it doesn't go the way Bowmore went, as Swami says. Hi Daniel, how you doing, mate? Daniel Vermasi's popped in. Uh, don't worry, Daniel. Have you had a lion? You've been lying in bed. Um, but thanks for popping up anyway it's fantastic meeting you in Glasgow Daniel we need to do it again soon sometime my friend cheers Swami thanks for popping in mate I'll tell Rachel you were asking for her yeah I'll try and pop in Swami I'm not going to I'm going to pop off I won't be on after 9 o'clock anyway mate so I'll, I'll run out mate I have the port pipe, the marsala, and the other also from Glanarchy, all cast right there. Have you got them all open? Have you opened them all, Mark? I don't think you've opened them all already, have you? Need to let us know how you got on with them. I'm going to be in touch with you a wee bit more often, mate, I think. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Listen, I don't know if a lot of the chat I know about Ebfest. I'm sure they do. They will know about Ebfest. Ebfest was the night before the gathering in Glasgow. Oh yeah, oh, I look forward to them, mate. So I'll I'll check them out, and if if I'm interested, I might get you to. Can I can I buy them um, direct from the distillery? If not, you might need to do a bit of mulling for me and. Driving up and down space out there. What a tough life you've got. Uh, I think we've drifted a wee bit, guys. Yeah, no, collecting in prices, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I love I love the chase. Even when I was in my collecting days, I love just scrolling through auction sites and looking at bottles and looking at how they were selling and what sort of money they were going for. Um, building up a few. The other one I built up was the 
Kilkerran, full range of the Kilkerran. Again, those were, I think when I bought them, they were about 40, 50 pound a bottle. Um, and now you're probably looking for the, the range of them. I think there's, I think the 10 of them, you're looking for about 800, maybe 900 pounds for those. Um, but again, they just look fantastic on the shelves. Uh, Andy C, I like port influence bottles. I think I'm with you there, um, Andy. I like, I must admit, I'm a bit of a sherry head. I love sherries. Um, I like any sort of kind of finishings, rums and marsalas and ports and all that kind of stuff. I do like them. Um, I'm trying to find my way into peat, but I'm struggling because I'm buying that much sherry that I'm struggling to get to. Pete, um, it's a tough life, isn't it? All these bottles to try and drink. Um, let's have a look and see what's going on here again. Uh, let's pop that up a little bit. I'll make this chart a little bit bigger, actually. If kind of that's better, okay, that's a bit better. Uh, do, 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 do. Jay Chung's a port fan as well. Jay, Jay I, believe, I think you just like anything whiskey. You know what I mean? I think you like, I'm sure I've seen you saying you like peat and I'm sure you said you like sherries and I'm sure you like bourbons. No, I haven't tried the Paolo Cartado. I've, do, I've done the, I've got the decenary. I bought a couple of bottles of the Decenary. That's that was a beautiful one. Uh, I think I did a nine-year-old. What was the nine-year-old I had? Um, kind of think off the top of my head. I did a nice nine-year-old, and it was beautiful with them. You're talking to me, Daniel. What's going on? You're still alive. I don't know if that's you're talking to somebody else there, but uh, I've missed them. Maybe I missed a part there. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, Daniel's right. There's too many choices, Daniel. Uh, I think, yeah, no, there's, there's, listen, it doesn't matter if you like peat, if you like sherry, if you like bourbon, if you like, there's that much um, fantastic stuff. Uh, you know, you can pop out the chat to see it. Yeah, I've just done it. I've just done it. <laughs> Daniel, I did do it, and then I must have hit a button and it disappeared. So yeah, I've, I've popped out now, mate. Thanks for the, thanks for the advice. Um, yeah, I've gone blind there trying to see that little chat there, but I've, I've got the big one now, uh, and it's it's done me a favour because it's covered me up as well, which is is great. I hate kind of looking at myself like that. Um, oh yeah, you've popped back in again, mate. Yeah, no, well done. Yeah, no, as I say, there's lots and lots of whiskies, lots of... As to say, guys, I'm trying to do... I've been doing some bourbons lately. Um, I think it'd be quite interesting because I've, I've I've got lots and lots of whiskies, but I've not um, I've not had much to do with bourbon. And I think I remember I did one of my first videos was the... I got myself a hold of the... I'll just pop it. Yeah, that marks. Yeah, Mark, the Ben Roman 100 proof is fantastic. Uh, as I say, I've got I've got a couple of bottles of the 10, and then obviously you've got me that little distillery open one. But yeah, no, I've done the 100 proof, and it's fantastic. Is it right they're discontinuing it? Is that, that the plan? I realised I definitely prefer scotch to bourbon. Is that right? Well, that's strange. So, just an interesting one, G. You being a bourbon man, what what changed you to whiskey? What what was the whiskey that kind of changed you over, or was there a few of them? That's a very interesting point, Daniel. Daniel saying, so do you think that people should learn to be in the moment instead of analysing all their whiskey? <sighs> wow, it's. I don't analyse it. I just, if you're collecting, then it's the, the point is, is you've, you've got to do a wee bit of homework and a wee bit of research to to decide what you're going to buy and how much you're going to pay for it. Um, I, I think sometimes you can get carried away and 
sometimes you pick up a bargain. If you want to just buy it to drink, then yeah, I would be I'd get right into that moment and just try all those different bottles and find what's what's your kind of flavour profile. Uh, at the minute, for me, it's sherry. Uh, I'm trying to branch out now and try to do a bit of bourbon. As I say, I did one of my early videos was the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, but when I told everyone that that was my very first bourbon, a lot of guys thought that I'd, I couldn't go back from that. There was nothing that would can be better. So the minute I'm trying a few of your regular bourbons, I've got some guys in America sending me some, some other bourbons that I can try. And hopefully I'm going to do a few reviews, a few bourbon reviews coming up later on uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So where are we? That's why I kind of like blind tasting. Yeah, no, blind tasting's great. You can get it right. You can, I think you're more likely to get it wrong than get it right. But it's that's the beauty of blind tasting. Um... I'm enjoying bunting up financial literature and things change from the usual. You know, you guys seem to be getting on. You're all into these kind of virgin oaks at the minute. Uh, Daniel, I've got this one at the minute. Uh, I don't know if it's classed as Canadian, but I think it started off as Canadian. I've got this whistle pig, 10-year-old straight rye. Um, single barrel and it was bottled for a it's a single cask and it was bottled for a whiskey shop here in the UK called Nichols and Perks so I've been getting through that one quite nicely uh, this is where are we 122.3 proof so again I thought I would try and compete with Elijah Craig so that, that's one that I've been trying on I don't know if you've tried that. Uh... All right, Paul, nice to see you, mate. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, it's from my province and bottled. And yeah, no, I think it's, I think is it the, I think it's distilled, distilled in America, isn't it? Somewhere in Vermont, I think, yeah. There's a wee bit of thingy on here. Where are we? Uh, imported from. Yeah, no, I can't, can't make it out, mate. No, I know it's 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 done in both Canada and America. Uh, have you have you tried that whistle pig, Daniel? What do you think of it? I think it's won some awards and all sorts of crazy stuff in it. Uh, yeah, bottled in Virginia. Vermont, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you like it, yeah. I'll tell you the reason why I've got the Elijah Craig cork on it, because the, the other cork in this, it just, it, it wouldn't, um, it didn't break or anything, it just, it didn't feel secure. So I just finished the bottle of Elijah Craig and, and popped the, uh, that cork in there nice and it's nice and snug now so I, I love to hear that cork pop um, and the Elijah Craig one pops beautifully in that bottle um, Alan I'm going gonna get the last of my wizard pig sample right now yeah no no it's if you don't finish that yet I don't think you ever told me how you got on with it but no I've shared quite a bit of that as well And DC got my whistle pig sample to try when I get home. Oh, okay, nice. So everybody seems to be getting into the whistle pig then, eh? The owner is actually a contestant from a reality dating show. Wow, who would ever have thought that? Nice to have you back, Matthias. I don't think you've missed much, mate. You can always catch it in the catch up anyway. So, okay, guys, uh, where are we? Yeah, I'm going to do as I said earlier. I'm going to do another one of those giveaway packs um, with the Glen Goins and that. And I'm 25 and 21 and teapot. 
and I'll put a couple of extra drams in there. So this one's open to all subscribers. All you've got to do is put in the comments samples, and then I'll and then when I do either in my next video or I do another live, I'll I'll pick out a winner again with that. So hopefully that goes off to somebody nice. There's some nice whiskies in that. Hopefully somebody will enjoy it. Maybe I should send you whiskey throttle. I've actually, Daniel, I've actually got a guy going over to Canada next week, so I'm going to try and get him to get me one. I don't know how, if it's available or not, or if it's knackered or it's gone, uh, but that would be great. If, if he can't get me to you, then no problem, mate. I'll come back to you on that, if that's all right. Um, I've seen the one you gave to Roy. I think it changed Roy's uh, feelings on Canadian whiskies, so... So I'm, I'm no doubt that. So I know there's a lot of good chatter about that lot for lot forty. Okay. So you're enjoying that whistle pig, then, eh? I must admit, I'm enjoying it myself. It's a little bit mint. It's really nice and minty. Uh, it's lovely. See, it's got the high ABV as well, so it needs that wee bit of touch of water in it as well. Uh, should we put it in the comment to this live when it's done? Yeah, no, that's a good point, mate. Yeah, no, that, that'd be good. Um, and then obviously anybody that's subscribing who catches up in the in the replay can do the same. Yeah, no, that'd be fantastic. Once it's finished, just pop a comment in. Uh, wow, I forgot what it was like. So do you like it, Mark? Yeah. No, it's a nice bottle. So I'm, I'm really enjoying... The difference in the bourbons, um, and I'm looking forward to trying more. As I see, I've got some samples coming from over the other side of the pond, um, and hopefully I'm going to try and review a few of those. And, and I can't wait. And I see, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm definitely enjoying it, and it's a different type of whiskey. Um, and I think, again, there's lots. The, the only thing, again, with prices, I think in America they're dog cheap, but to try and buy them here, they're, they're silly money. I think that Elijah Craig over there is about fifty dollars. I think, but to buy one here, you're looking a hundred pounds plus. Uh, if you're lucky, you get a hold of it. Uh, very unusual. No, it's different. I think that's the rye, and it's hundred percent rye as well. So I think it's a bit an acquired taste. It took me a wee bit to get into it, um, but I think once once you get past it, it's it's super stuff. Uh, and it's as I say, it's nice with a touch of water as well. Uh, let's just see where we are. So anyway, nobody's admitting to be a whiskey collector. I'm, I'm, it just seems to be me and you, Daniel. Uh, I think they're all telling porky pies, I think. Um, let's have a look, Ronan. Tasty bookers once and enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I've got a bookers coming to me soon. Oh, Daniel Collects. There you go. Well done, Daniel. Daniel the Collector. How many bottles you got in your collection, Daniel? And these are not just the, the drinking ones. I mean the collectible bottles. Uh, he says he collects things, but I don't know if he's collecting whiskey. But uh, I have 100% rye whiskey maturing in my cask. I got it as a new make and it's coming along nicely. Very nice. Do, do, do. Russell, I'm a collector of empties. Well done, Russell. Do you not have a recycling? You maybe do a recycling video then. Uh, no, you don't need to, Daniel. We've seen, we've all seen your bottles, mate. You don't have to say you're a collector. We all know you're a. We all know you're a collector. And everybody keeps telling us how you're collecting. Uh, I can tell you, but then I have to. Yeah, okay, no worries. I've got two Daniel collectors. But if I get any more Daniel subscribers, then I bet they collect as well. Um, okay, let's have a look. It's in the name, Daniel, yeah. Daniel the Collector. Let me have another little sip of this. I'm getting a bit dry in the throat now. Let's just try a little bit of this Glencadam 15. 
Beautiful. I don't know if, if there's any sound being picking up from the background, guys, because I've got a lot of kids playing outside. And the birds are always starting to start chirping at the minute. So I think it's one of the downsides of uh, being outdoors. So if that's coming along, then thanks. I collect what I intend to drink later, but can't easily get... Can't easily get any more EG or Pony 1721. Where are you in America, Jay? Because I was talking to um, Phil at Captain 3D and he reckons there's a lot of old Pony 21 and old Pony 17 still in his neck of the woods. I think he's in California, I think. See if you think there's a lot of there. Okay, Daniel, I'll just call you Throttle, mate. Throttle the Collector. Uh, it's my wife's fault. Okay, Daniel's blaming the Daniel Vermassi's blaming his wife, which that's a bit lame, Daniel. Okay, Matthias, thanks for popping in, mate. I'll catch you later on. So, does it sound good, uh, Ronan? Yeah, I've just bought myself a new mic, so hopefully that's money well spent. Glenn Cadam has just got permission to build a new visitor centre. Oh, that'd be good. Um, that'd be nice, Glenn Cadam. Um, I see that's one of my. I did do a little run of videos on that, and it was a wee firm favourite at the time with Glenn Cadam. Every one of them seems to be nice. Seventeen's about, but not many twenty ones anymore. Uh, just buy as many as you can, Jay. Even if it's not to collect them, but. Just need the link to drink. But here, that 21 now is collectible here. So I think if we put that in an auction, it would make it make serious money at the auction. And it's amazing just to get an idea that if whatever part of the world you live in, that you could live in America and you could pick it up on, off the shelf. But if you lived in this neck of the woods, then you'd have to pay silly money to get a hold of it. Uh, and it's it's a shame if you're a, if you're a Glenn uh, an old Pulteney fan and you're you're a fan of the 21 and you're a fan of the 17. But it's a shame that you have to uh, go to those lengths to get one. And that's that's the power of auctions and collectible whiskies. It's not even the fact that it's it's collectible. It's just hard to find now. So it's just hard to find whiskies. And if, if you're a fan of it, then you'll pay to get it. And it's if just to get a quick question back to you, Jay. How much would you prepare to pay to get that old Pulteney 21 if you saw one? How far would you go to get it? Because I think here, if we were to buy one here now at auction, it could be 250 to £300 to get that. Um, and again, that was about a £100 bottle of whiskey when it was out on the shelves. Old Pulteney 21 costs 400 euros now. See, that's a lot of money. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think when Phil was telling me when he was looking at it on the shelves in California, it was $160 uh, in California. And I think the 17 was about $120. Um, so that's where we are with that. Uh, Jay's got a good number of the 17 squirreled away. So you are a collector, Jay. And gifts and opened one recently. I would probably pay $200. I got them for 150 I think. Too many other good whiskies around at that price. Yeah, see, that's the difference, though. If, if you're buying... See, what the guys now are quite shrewd at, the collectors, if they can pick one of these... Let's say an auction for an old Pulteney 21 came along and there was like six or seven bottles in that auction. Then if they could pick one up for about £100, £150, then it's it's easy money. Uh, it's money well spent. And then they would just hoard it. Yeah, Daniel's got a first edition Glenallachie 25. 
store exclusive. That is half the cost of the distillery edition. You gonna drink that, Daniel? Are you gonna keep it? Or will I call you throttle? Are you gonna keep it throttle or are you gonna drink it? J Chung got OP17 left, getting more expensive now, though stock reduces. Yeah, anybody tried the new old Pulteney's? What are you thinking of? And all good or better. Okay. Yeah, no, Jay's right. What do you think? Throttle, are you going to keep that one, that signed one? Add it to your vast collection. It's over half gone already. <laughs> yeah, no, nice, nice. That was a nice show, Daniel. I enjoyed watching that one, mate. I thought you interviewed very well. Were you pissed when you were doing it or were you sober? What's everyone drinking tonight then, guys? Who's drinking what? How's that whistle pig doing now, Mark? In fact, I might actually have one of them now. Let me just try one of them whistle pigs. Who, who was it that spotted the Elijah Craig cork on it? That was sharp-eyed, that was. Yeah, who did that? Oh, lovely. I don't know if you can see the colour of this, guys, but looks absolutely phenomenal. It's it's got that kind of pink hue as well. It's absolutely wonderful stuff, and it's so oily and so thick. Wow! Oh, almost lost it. <laughs> this old pig has a bit of a fisherman's friend on the finish. Yeah, <laughs> you could be right there. What's Jay saying here? Jay, was so hard to pay the price, especially compared to the old prices, but if the 18 is all we've got available now, that 25 is crazy price. Yeah, no, I'm not sure if you're talking about the, which one you're talking about there, guys. The cup Alberta premium hundred percent right. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm Daniel, I'm gonna get into um bourbons and rye and all that because it's again I just want to kind of see that even even the whiskey's pretty new to me. I've only been two or three years drinking whiskey. Um but no I'm ready to just kind of venture out and try other things. Have a look uh try another and obviously the, the Canadians a lot forties are kind of putting these on the map at the minute. Um what was that other one? The Alberta Premium. Is that expensive, Daniel? How's that? What kind of money is that one? So you guys will get them much, much cheaper. We we're, we're limited to what we can get here. We can get as much scotch as we want. Um, there's lots and lots of places, and I can get as much. But as regards with the American whiskies and the Canadian whiskies, then it's we're pretty much limited. Um, talking about the new old Pontney Reigns, Russell. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the old Pontneys. So if you've if you tried them, though, are you, are you enjoying them? Because I, I, I definitely like old Pontney. It just it just winds me up about the, the, the price changes. Uh, that was obviously one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about prices today. Uh, and I bet a distiller is possible where Whistle Pig is from. Central Distillery. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I'm impressed. Hopefully I can I can do the reviews justice when I get to do some bourbons. Cheers, guys. It's so dry, this as well. And so thick. But it's absolutely wonderful, wonderful stuff. Right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this because I'm conscious that there's some other guys who are doing live streams tonight. Oh, we've got Glenn McKnight. How you doing, Glenn? Nice to see you. Waitrose are selling wild turkey for a 101 for 26. Yeah, no, that sounds good, that. I might check that out, mate. Thanks for popping in, Glenn. I don't know if I missed you earlier on. I don't know if you've just popped in, but are you being quiet? Are you a collector, Glenn? Probably tell me you're not, like the rest of them. Uh, Zach Burns, there's a new name as well. How you doing, Zach? You okay? If anyone lives in Alberta, Costco has a Highland Park 21. 248 Canadian dollars. So what's the kind of conversion there, Zach? Is it kind of half for pounds? Thanks for having me. Oh, no, you're very welcome, Zach. £145. That for, a, what would you say, a 21 Highland Park. Oh, I don't know if that's... That might be a bit ex ex expensive, that, um, Zach. I think you can get that here. Uh, probably a little bit less than that, I think. I'm sure you can get that here. No, just a drinker. Yeah, another one that tells lies, man. You're all telling lies. I'd love to see into all your houses to see all them whiskey cabinets and walls that have all been transformed and fitted wardrobes and all that with the whiskey on it. Yeah. As I say, guys, I'm I'm probably going to end this now because I'm as I say, I'm conscious that some of the other guys are are going live shortly. Don't want to interfere with them. Don't want to mess with them. Mines are all opened up. Yeah, okay. Nice. Happy days. Uh, look forward to them samples. Um, so just do a little bit of housekeeping, guys. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken time out to watch me chat nonsense, uh, share a couple of drams with you, uh, and hope to, I'm going to hope to do it soon. I want to try and make this a kind of regular thing. Hopefully as they go on, they'll get a wee bit more organised. Um, sometimes I do a list I have done a list here of going through it but um, it can all go to pot because I just like watching the chat and uh, talking to people thanks again for the congratulations Mark with hitting the 400 hopefully I can now head towards 500 guys so just a quick one if you've got any friends that have not subscribed just badge their ear and share my content with them and try and get them to subscribe for me that would be fantastic um so again to everyone who if you watch it in the replay thanks again for having a look and i'll try and catch up with you all again um very very soon and and again that's me guys thank you very much oh i think i soon had a thousand <laughs> i hope you've got a load of mates paul uh no mark you're all right listen i don't want these to get guys to subscribe you're not going to watch for me, it's not about the subscribing. It's all about I'd rather just sit and chat to you because I've got nobody to talk to about whiskey. So for me, this is this is marking out. Uh, the subscribers are just a bonus. Um, but I, honestly, I've got some really fantastic subscribers. I've got a whole core bunch who are always commenting, who are always watching. If I can grow that, then great. If not, then I'm happy with this bunch of friends that I've got here now. Uh, Bill, thanks for watching, mate. Paul. Mark, Ronan, we'll just kind of quick went through. Sorry if I've missed anybody. Zach Burns, as I say, that's the first time I've seen you, Zach, so thanks for popping in, mate. Uh, Russell, cheers, buddy. And Glenn McKnight, all the other ones, Matthias, Cast, mate, and all those kind of guys. 
Uh, and then obviously everybody that catches up on the replay, thanks very much, guys. Don't forget to put your comment in the bottom, guys. Everybody that subscribed, I'm going to draw one probably either on my next video or on my next live. Uh, until next time, guys. Cheers, buddies. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.